The Chalukya dynasty IAST, Kalukya, also known as the Chalukyas of Gujarat, ruled parts of what are now Gujarat and Rajasthan in northwestern India, between c. 940 CE and c. 1244 CE. Their capital was located at Anahilavada modern Patan. At times, their rule extended to the Malwa region in present-day Madhya Pradesh. The medieval legends describe them as Agnavanshi Rajputs, and they are also known as the Solanki dynasty in the vernacular literature. Malaraja, the founder of the dynasty, supplanted the last ruler of the Chapatkata dynasty around 940 CE. His successors fought several battles with the neighboring rulers such as the Chudasamas, the Paramaras and the Chahamanas of Shakambari. During the reign of Bhima I, the Ghaznavid ruler Mahmud invaded the kingdom and raided the Somnath temple during 1024–1025 CE. The Chalukyas soon recovered, and the kingdom reached its zenith under the rule of Jayasimha Siddharaja and Kumarapala in the 12th century. Several minor dynasties, such as the Chahamanas of Jailar and the Chahamanas of Natala, served as Chalukya vassals during this period. After Kumarapala's death, the kingdom was gradually weakened by internal rebellions, uprisings by feudatories, and invasions by the Paramaras, the Ghorids, the Yadavas and others. Taking advantage of this, the Vigelas, who had earlier served as Chalukya generals, usurped the power and established a new dynasty in the 1240s. Several princely state rulers of the Solanki clan claimed descent from the Chalukyas. Name The dynasty used the self-designation, Chalukya, in all but four of its records. The four exceptions are Chalakika in the Khadi grant of Malaraja, Salkika in a grant of Chamundaraja, Chalakya in the Sambar inscription of Jayasimha, Chalakya in the Jailer inscription of Kumarapalahemakandra, a Jain scholar in the Chalakya court, generally used the terms Chalakya and Chulukya. His Devasraya Mahakavya mentions the variants. Chulakya, Chalaka, and Chulaka. His Kumarapala Karita mentions another variant, Chuluga. The Chalakya court poet Someshvara describes the dynasty as Chalakya in Kurdi Kamudi and Chulukya in the Abu inscription of Vastupala Tehapala. Salanki or Salanki is a vernacular form of the term. Origins The word Chalukya is thought to be a variant of the word Chalukya. Several other dynasties were known by the name Chalukya, including the Chalukyas of Vatapi, Navasarika, Vemulavada, Kalyani, Vengi, and Lada. These dynasties are sometimes thought to be branches of the same family, but the relationship between all of them is not certain. Unlike the Chalukyas of Kalyani and Vengi, the Chalukyas of Gujarat never claimed a shared descent or any other association with the earliest Chalukya dynasty, the Chalukyas of Atapi. Moreover, they never used the term Chalukya to describe themselves. However, the Chalukyas of Gujarat shared a myth of origin with the Chalukyas of Kalyani and Vengi. According to this legend, the progenitor of the dynasty was created by Brahma. The version of the legend mentioned in the Vadnagar Prashasti inscription of Kumarapala is as follows, the deities once asked the creator god Brahma to protect them from the Danavas demons. Brahma then created a hero from his chuluka pot or folded palm, which was filled with Ganges water. This hero was named Chulukya and became the progenitor of the dynasty. A variation of this legend is mentioned by Abhyadalaka Gani in his commentary on Himachandra's Devashraya Kavya. According to this version, Brahma produced the hero to support the earth, after his other creations disappointed him. These stories are of no historical value, as it was customary for contemporary royal houses to claim mythical and heroic origins. The Kumarapala Bhupala Karita of Jayasimha Suri presents Chulukya as a historical warrior, whose capital was Madhapama. Malaraja was his descendant, with nearly a hundred generations separating the two. This account may be partly historical. Matapama has been identified variously as a location outside Gujarat, including present day Mathura. C. V. Vaidya theorized that the Chalukyas were different from the Chalukyas. 
Ghojha opposed this theory, pointing out that an inscription of the Lata Chalukya ruler Kirtiraja describes his family as Chalukya, while an inscription of his grandson Trilochanapala describes the family as Chaulakya. According to Asok Majumdar, while these similar sounding names suggest a common origin for all these dynasties, there is no concrete evidence to draw any definitive conclusion. Majumdar theorized that the Chaulakyas were connected to the Salikas or the Chulikas, a tribe mentioned in several ancient records. This tribe is described as living on the northern frontier of ancient India. However, Majumdar admitted that there is not enough evidence to regard this theory as conclusive. In the later period, the Chaulakyas were categorized as one of the Rajput clans, although the Rajput identity did not exist during their time. According to the Agnikula myth mentioned in a 16th century recension of the legendary text Prithviraj Raso, four Rajput clans, including the Chaulakyas, were born from a fire pit on Mount Abu. A section of colonial era historians interpreted this mythical account to suggest that these clans were foreigners who came to India after the decline of the Gupta Empire around the 5th century CE, and were admitted in the Hindu caste system after performing a fire ritual. In addition, the Chalukya rulers have been called. Gurhararaja and Gurharasvara, ruler of Gurhara. Based on this legend, D. R. Bhandarkar and others theorized that the Chalukyas were a branch of Gurharas, whom they believed to be a tribe of foreign origin. Bhandarkar and Augustus Hornley also believed that the name of the Lada region changed to Gurjaratra, later Gujarat, during the Chalukya reign, presumably because they were Gurharas. However, this foreign origin theory is weakened by a number of factors. The Chalukyas did not claim an Agnikula origin for themselves, it was the neighboring Paramara rulers who used the legend to explain their own origin. The inscriptions from the reign of Bhima II prove that the Chalukyas knew about the Agnikula legend, but associated it with the Paramaras, not themselves. The earliest copies of Prithviraj Raso do not mention this legend either. The legend that includes the Chalukyas among the fireborn clans is first mentioned by the 16th century poets, who may have extended the Paramara legend to include other dynasties, in order to foster Rajput unity against the Mughals. Moreover, there is no evidence that the Chalukya territory area came to be known as Gurjaratra during the Chalukya reign. Gurhara and Lada were two distinct historical regions in northern and southern parts of present-day Gujarat respectively, and the term, Lada, was never used to describe the whole of Gujarat. The Chalukya kings were called, Gurhararaja, and, Gurharasvara, because they ruled the territory which was already called Gurhara by their time. Several other kings who held similar epithets had earlier ruled this territory, these include the Gurhara Pratiharas and the Gurharas of Nandipuri. Historian Asok Kumar Majumdar points out that even the southern Ganga chief Marasimha II assumed the title, King of Gurjaras, after defeating a northern king on behalf of the Rashtrakutas. History Early rulers The Chalukyas were one of the several dynasties that rose to power amid the decline of the Gurhara Pratihara and the Rashtrakuta empires. In the mid-10th century CE, the dynasty's founder Malaraja supplanted Samantasimha, the last Chapatkata king. According to legends, he was a nephew of Samantasimha. According to the 12th century chronicler Himachandra, Malaraja defeated Graharipu, the king of Saurashtra. He also defeated the Lata Chalukya chief Barapa, aided by his son Chamundaraja. Chamundaraja succeeded Malaraja around 996 CE. During his reign, the Paramara king Sindoraja appears to have invaded the Lata region, which was under Chalukya suzerainty. Malaraja forced Sindoraja to retreat. The 14th century chronicler Jayasimha Suri claims that Chamundaraja killed Sindoraja in a battle, but this claim appears to be doubtful, as it does not appear in any earlier source. Sometime before 1007 CE, the Lata region was captured by the Chalukyas of Kalyani led by Satishraya. Around 1008 CE, Chamundaraja retired after appointing his son Vallabharaja as the next king. Legendary accounts state that he set out for a pilgrimage to Varanasi. During this journey, he was insulted by a ruler whose kingdom lay on the way to Varanasi. He returned to the Chalukya capital, and asked his son to avenge his insult. 
Vallabharaja died of smallpox during a march to the enemy kingdom, which is identified as the Paramara kingdom of Malwa by some chroniclers. Chamundaraja's other son Durlabharaja became the next king in c. 1008 CE. He invaded the Lata region, and defeated the Lata Chalukya ruler Kirtiraja or Kirtipala, who was a vassal of the Kalyani Chalukyas. However, Kirtiraja regained control of the region within a short time, before being defeated by the Paramara king Boja. Neighboring rivalries Durlabharaja was succeeded by his nephew Bhima I, who faced an invasion from the Ghaznavid ruler Mahmud during 1024–1025 CE. Bhima fled to Kanthkot, as Mahmud entered the Chalukya territory unopposed and sacked the Somnath temple. After Mahmud's departure, Bhima restored the Chalukya rule. He crushed revolts by the Paramara chiefs of Arbuta, who used to serve as Chalukya vassals. Bhima also defeated and imprisoned Krishnadeva, a ruler of the Paramara branch of Binmal. He unsuccessfully fought against the Nadala Shahamana ruler Anahila. Anahila's sons Balaprasada and Jendraraja defeated Bhima and forced him to release Krishnadeva. Later legendary accounts credit Bhima with a victory against Hamuka, a ruler of Sindh, although the accuracy of this claim is not certain. Semi legendary accounts suggest that Bhima formed an alliance with the Kalachari king Lakshmi Karna, and the two played an important role in the downfall of the Paramara king Boja around 1055 CE. According to the 14th century chronicler Maratunga, Boja and Lakshmi Karna invaded Boja's kingdom of Malwa from two opposite directions, and Boja died of a disease during this invasion. Some Chalukya chroniclers boast that Bhima annexed Boja's capital Dara or that he captured Boja alive, but these claims are not corroborated by historical evidence. After Boja's death, a rivalry developed between the Bhima and Lakshmi Karna over sharing the spoils of their victory. Bhima's son Karna succeeded him around 1064 CE. Boja's brother Udayaditya, supported by the Shakambari Shahamana king Vigraharaja III, forced Karna to retreat from Malwa. Meanwhile, the Kalachuris managed to capture the Lata region. By 1074 CE, Karna evicted the Kalachuris from Lata, and annexed the region to the Chalukya kingdom, before losing it to one Trivikramapala within three years. The Nadala Shahamana ruler Prithvipala defeated Karna, and his successor Jojayadeva occupied the Chalukya capital Anahilapataka, possibly when Karna was busy at another place. The Shakambari Shahamana king Durlabharaja III also appears to have achieved some military success against Karna, although the Shahamana descriptions of this victory are highly exaggerated. According to legendary chronicles, Karna also defeated Bhil and Kohli tribals, who used to raid the Chalukya territories. He established a city called Karnavati after defeating a Bhil chief named Asha Asa. Karnavati is identified with modern Ahmedabad by some, but this is not certain. Imperial expansion Karna's son Jayasimha Siddharaja R. C. 1092-1142 CE greatly expanded the Chalukya power. He defeated Kangara alias Navagana, the Chudasama king of Saurashtra. The Nadala Shahamana ruler Asharaja, who had been dethroned by his rival Ratnapala, became a vassal of Jayasimha sometime before 1143 CE. Jayasimha defeated the Shakambari Shahamana ruler Arnaraja. Later, however, Jayasimha accepted Arnaraja as an ally, and the Shahamana ruler married Jayasimha's daughter Kanchanadevi. The couple's son and thus Jayasimha's grandson Someshvara, was brought up at the Chalukya court. Someshvara's sons Prithviraja III, better known as Prithviraj Chohan and Hariraja were also born in Gujarat. During the 1135-1136 CE, Jayasimha annexed the Paramara kingdom of Malwa, with support from Asharaja and Arnaraja. The Paramara kings defeated by him were Naravarman and his successor Yashovarman. Jayasimha continued his eastward march, and reached as far as the Chandela kingdom ruled by Madanavarman. The Chalukya Chandela conflict was inconclusive, with both the sides claiming victory. Jayasimha also defeated several minor rulers, including Sindoraja, who was probably a Sumra king of Sindh. Jayasimha was succeeded by his relative Kumarapala, who spent his early life in exile to avoid persecution by Jayasimha. After Jayasimha's death, Kumarapala came back to the Chalukya capital and ascended the throne in 1043 CE, with help of his brother in law Kandadadeva. 
Arnaraja opposed Kumarapala's ascension to the throne, but Kumarapala defeated him decisively. Kumarapala seems to have helped Asharaja's son Katukaraja capture the throne of Nadala. Katukaraja's younger brother and successor Alhanadeva continued to rule as Kumarapala's vassal. Arnaraja's son Vigraharaja IV subdued Kumarapala's Shahamana feudatories at Nadala. The Shakambari Shahamana Chalakya relations seem to have become more cordial when Arnaraja's son and Jayasimha's grandson Someshvara became the Shahamana king in later years, possibly with support from Kumarapala. After Jayasimha's death, the Paramara king Jayavarman I regained control of Malwa, but he was soon dethroned by an usurper named Balala. Kumarapala captured Malwa from Balala, who was killed by Kumarapala's Arbuta Paramara feudatory Yashodavala in a battle. Kumarapala subdued a rebellion by his vassal Vikramasimha, a Paramara chief of Arbuta. The Paramara branch at Kiradu continued to acknowledge Kumarapala's suzerainty. In the early 1160s, Kumarapala sent an army against Malakarjuna, the Shilahara king of northern Konkana. This campaign was probably triggered by a Shilahara raid in southern Gujarat, and ended with Malakarjuna's death. Kumarapala's Nadala Shahamana feudatory Alhana put down disturbances in Saurashtra at Kumarapala's request. Historical evidence suggests that Kumarapala's empire extended from Chittor and Jaisalmer in the north to the Vindhyas and the Tapti River in the south, ignoring his raid of the Shilahara kingdom of northern Konkana. In the west, it included Kachcha and Saurashtra, in the east, it extended up to at least Vidisha. Bilsa. Kumarapala was succeeded by Ajayapala, who retained Kumarapala's territories, but died after a short reign. Ajayapala's young sons Malaraja II and Bhima II succeeded him one after other. During this period, the Gurid king Muhammad of Ghor invaded the Chalakya kingdom in 1178 CE. In the ensuing battle at Kasarada or Kayadara, Muhammad was defeated by a large army, which included loyal Chalakya feudatories such as the Natala Shahamana ruler Kelhanadeva, the Jailer Shahamana ruler Kirtipala, and the Arbuta Paramara ruler Dharavarsha. Decline <inaudible> 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 Taking advantage of the young age of Bhima II, some provincial governors rebelled against him in order to establish independent states. His loyal Vigela feudatory Arnaraja came to his rescue, and died fighting the rebels. Arnaraja's descendants Lavanaprasada and Viradavala became powerful during Bhima's reign. During Bhima's reign, the Hoysala ruler Veera Balala II seems to have raided the Lata region. The Yadava ruler Biyama V also invaded Gujarat, but was forced to retreat by Bhima's feudatory Kelhanadeva. The Shakambari Shahamana king Prithviraja III also fought with the Chalukyas, but Bhima's general Jagadeva managed to conclude a peace treaty with Prithviraja sometime before 1187 CE. By the mid 1190s CE, the Ghorids defeated the Prithviraja and the other major Hindu kings of northern India. On 4 February 1197 CE, the Gurid general Qutb al-Din Abak invaded Bhima's capital Anahilapataka, and inflicted a massive defeat on the Chalukyas. Bhima's generals Lavanaprasada and Sridhara later forced the Ghorids to retreat, and the capital was back under the Chalukya rule by 1201 CE. Subhadavarman, the Paramara king of Malwa, invaded the Lata region around 1204 CE, taking advantage of the turmoil caused by the Gurid invasions. He probably also sacked the Chalukya capital Anahilapataka. Once again, Lavanaprasada and Sridhara saved the kingdom by forcing Subhadavarman to retreat. During 1205–1210 CE, Bhima's relative Jayantasimha or Jayasimha usurped the throne. In the early 1210s, Subhadavarman's successor Arjunavarman defeated Jayantasimha, and later established a matrimonial alliance with him. Bhima managed to regain control of the throne during 1223–1226 CE Meanwhile, the Yadavas invaded the southern part of the Chalukya kingdom, led by Biyama's successors Jaitugi and Simhana. During these invasions, the Chalukya feudatories in the northern region of Marwar rebelled. Lavanaprasada and Viradavala warded off the Yadava invasions, and also subdued the rebellions. The Gahilas of Metapada Gahilats of Mewar also rebelled against Bhima sometime between 1207 to 1227 CE and declared their independence by the end of Bhima's reign. Lavanaprasada and Viradavala assumed regal titles such as Maharajadiraja, King of Great Kings, and Maharaja, Great King. However, the two continued to nominally acknowledge Bhima and his successor Tribhuvanapala as their overlord. 
After Tribhuvanapala, they seized the throne, establishing the Vajela dynasty. Topic: <laughs> Claimed descendants. The Vajela dynasty, which succeeded the Chalukyas, claimed descent from a sister of Kumarapala. Various princely state dynasties calling themselves Salanki, the vernacular form of Chalukya, claimed descent from the Chalukyas as well. These included the rulers of the Lunavada state, which was a tributary to the Marathas before coming under the British rule. Several of the Bora Walis and Dai Almatlaks claimed descent from Jayasima Siddharaja. These included Siedna Ismail, the 34th Dai Almatlak. List of rulers The Chalukya rulers of Gujarat, with approximate dates of reign, are as follows Malaraja c. 940 c. 995 Chamundaraja c. 996 c. 1008 Vallabharaja c. 1008 Durlabharaja c. 1008 c. 1022 Bhima I, c. 1022 c. 1064. Karna, c. 1064 c. 1092. Jayasimha Siddharaja, c. 1092 c. 1142. Kumarapala, c. 1142 c. 1171. Ajayapala, c. 1171 c. 1175. Malaraja II, c. 1175 c. 1178. Bhima II, c. 1178 c. 1240. Tribhuvanapala, c. 1240 c. 1244. Topic: Religion. Most of the dynasty's rulers were Shaivite, although they also patronized Jainism. The dynasty's founder Malaraja is said to have built Mulavasadika temple for Digambara Jains and the Mulanatha Jinadeva temple for the Svetambara Jains. The earliest of the Dilwara temples and the Madhira Sun temple were constructed during the reign of Bhima I. According to popular tradition, his queen Udayamati also commissioned the queen's step well. Kumarapala started patronizing Jainism at some point in his life, and the subsequent Jain accounts portray him as the last great royal patron of Jainism. The Chalukya rulers also endowed mosques to maintain good relationship with the Muslim traders. <laughs> 